Welcome into Three Questions with Ivan Mazel, where Ivan brings his insight on all things college football to us here on the On3 YouTube channel on a twice a week basis. Ivan, fresh off the trip to Austin, saw the Horn Frogs beat the Longhorns. Huge win for that program. I'll get right to it. What is the percentage chance that TCU finishes the year Big 12 champions and undefeated? You know, JD, I think it's better than a coin flip. I, they are, they're a very good team. And what impressed me about the Texas game was that they won with defense rather than coming back and outscoring people the way, that, you know, especially in the second half that they've done all year. They held Texas to 199 total yards, which is hard to do. Uh, but the schedule's tough. They got to go to Baylor this week, and I know Baylor – tripped over themselves at home last week, but it's still a tough place to play. Iowa State has got probably the best defense in the conference. You, you know, forget their one loss record. They can't move the ball. And then they'll have probably K-State in the championship game. So that's three tough games. You know, it will help their resume with the committee, but they, they, they got work to do. I am fascinated by this game this Saturday in Waco. Because a season ago, Baylor went to Fort Worth and they had their own college football playoff aspirations. And the Horn Frogs were not what they are this season. I mean, they were relatively bad last year and they ended up spoiling their pursuit of the playoffs. So I'm very, very sure that Dave Aranda and company would love to uh, return the favor, so to speak, for Sonny Dykes and company. But regardless, like you said, it should be a really interesting slate. If they play Kansas State in that title game, it's just so hard to beat a team twice. So I'm encouraged, or excuse me, interested to see what they end up doing in that game. But I've been moving on. They've gotten it rolling in year one after, I mean, year one of the Sunday Dykes era, rather. How have they been able to be so successful so early on? Well, uh, he did a great job with the portal. Uh, you know, he solidified the offensive line, bringing center Alan Ali with him from SMU which allowed Steve Avila to move to right guard, and Avila is now an outlet trophy semifinalist. Uh, they, they've stayed healthy, which I think is a credit to the strength and conditioning staff, which came over with him from SMU. They've had, I think, 16 or 17 guys have started every game, which is unheard of, and two of, two of them that haven't started every game have only missed one start. So, uh, and... And it's a good scheme. And Max Duggan, nobody could have predicted that, that he would have the year he has. But he's got, you know, Kendra Miller is a great running back. Uh, wide receivers are good. Johnston, Quincy Johnston's done a, a terrific job. Uh, you know, they got everything on offense. And, and the, the secondary is good on defense. The D-line's been good. It, they're a solid team. And one thing I saw at Austin, J.D., is that, they don't beat themselves. You know, they didn't make any mistakes. They tackle well. Uh, there's in the gaps they're supposed to be in. And, you know, they, they're just they're playing really good football. And that sounds like an incredibly stupid and simple thing to say. But if it were that easy to do, there'd be more than four undefeated teams at this point. No, I think you hit it on the head. And you, you mentioned something that I think is probably the unsung hero of that program them taking Coach Cause, the head of strength and conditioning at SMU. He's been successful relatively everywhere he's been. I've talked to friends that were at that SMU program and a part of that locker room. They said Coach Cause provides obviously the physical edge, like he's one of the best in the game in that department, but the mental edge that they've been able to hone under him, I think has really shown itself, especially in a lot of those games where they've come back in the second half and shown resilience in one, which in the first year of a new staff isn't something that you always – expect so let's say tc runs the table they do finish undefeated win a big 12 title they're obviously in the college football playoff what are your thoughts on their ability to push you know one of those top dogs if they do draw a team like georgia in the first round or in ohio state uh <laughs> <laughs> well i you know georgia is just so talented and and, and so much bigger and physical, more physical than the teams they play. Uh, you know, Ohio State, let's see them get past Michigan first. And, we'll, you know, we're going to talk about that next week. But uh, it, it's hard to judge either Ohio State or Michigan because the Big Ten's just been so bad this year. 
And Tennessee, I, you know, I don't know who, you know, I don't know who the fourth team is. You know, we think it's Georgia, the Ohio State, Michigan winner. Uh, it may be, you know, if one of them loses, they're still in it. I, I don't know, but uh, TCU Tennessee would be tough too. I mean, that, that's a tough matchup. Tennessee's really good, yeah, but again, you know, TCU is not going to beat themselves. You're going to have to beat them. I mean, trying to play the whole playoff scenario in my head, at least like Nick break and I, our producer, we're talking before the program and talking about how like all the scenarios bring on migraine like symptoms. So the great oh, part yeah. of TCU is it's very straightforward win and you are in, which is a phenomenal place to be at this point in the year. Uh, Ivan, are you on the road this week? What's the travel plans? I am going to uh, USC at UCLA at the Rose Bowl. We'll see what that does to the Pac-12 race, which is about the last race we have. That's that's interesting. Uh, you know, SEC's decided, ACC's decided, uh, Big Ten with next week. You know, but it's not all that interesting. It's just one game. You know, you got five teams in the Pac-12 that are still in the race as we get to the last two weeks. That That's a lot of fun. And for the college football playoff, if it's USC that finishes the year with, let's say, three ranked wins and they're a one-loss conference champion, they have that 13th data point, I think the committee would put a team like that potentially in over Tennessee. So we'll see what happens there. But obviously, in regards to TCU, the format and the plan going forward is uh, pretty straightforward, which is nice to have in November. But Ivan, as always, thanks so much for joining on, and bringing some insight. Folks, if you haven't yet followed Ivan on Twitter or subscribe to the YouTube channel, would encourage you to do both. But we will be right back here next week talking Michigan, Ohio State. Ivan, thanks so much. Safe travels. Thanks, JD. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.